Hey, today I want to play a little game. Uh, in DaVinci Resolve with all of you. Uh, I want to share uh, part of a recent presentation I gave at ResolveCon for this year. I mean, recent a few months ago now. This is something that I shared at the exclusive VIP breakout. I'm not going to completely redo that presentation, but there is something small that I wanted to share with all of you and hopefully get your minds spinning a little bit. And I also thought it was pretty cool. But this game has to do with the fusion page. Now, the fusion page can be scary, uh, but there is uh, one thing I love showing off about the fusion page. If I hop back to the edit page and I come to something like this new comic speed lines effect that was added in version 19, you have your controls here in the inspector, but you also have this small button up here. And if you click this button on a lot of fusion titles or a fusion generators, it will actually open that effect inside the fusion page. And you can see all the specific nodes that went in to building that effect and getting you this finest look. You can see here, we have just a lot of different like fast noise nodes interacting with each other. Um, one I also really love to show off is this contours effect. Open it up in fusion. It is just four nodes. But the really cool thing here is that you also have all these different versions that give you drastically different looks. I really love this sort of like topography look, which you can also animate with this movement speed. It's really slick. And here you can see exactly how it was built. Now, um, these uh, ones we've shown off on the whole, pretty simple node trees, but node trees in the Fusion page can get pretty wild. Here's, uh, I'll toss one up on screen of something I was recently working on. It can get crazy and that's not even the worst of it. So let's play our little game. I'm going to hop into this fusion composition and we're going to look at this little uh, preset I've built here. We'll preview it and you can see it animates on. It's a simple sort of like uh, not quite progress bar, but like a percentage counter. It doesn't animate off because I didn't do that, but it animates on. Uh, it shows this number. It has this bar that fills that correct percentage. But something really cool is over here in the inspector on the Fusion page now, we have some really cool custom controls. We can change this from a text automatic value to a custom label, um, which adjusts things a little bit. That lets you type in anything you want, like yes, or subscribe. Or if we go back to that automatic value, we can change this percentage sign as well if you want it gone completely, or if you want it to represent something else like tacos, who knows. Uh, but percentage does work pretty well. And of course, this value control, how much do you want this uh, uh, bar to fill? And that is reflected in the number as well, all the way up to 100%. And then even changing things like this bar down here, the horizontal and vertical extend, you can round it off. Lots of cool controls, right? Pretty nifty, straightforward effect with some cool customization. How many nodes do you think it took inside the fume page for me to build this entire title. We have, you know, a few different layers of text. We have uh, this slider control. We have this bar down here. I could have added more controls like alternate colors and stuff, but we're trying to keep this simple as is. For this effect, try to think in your mind how many nodes, if you put them together, how many different text plus nodes and merging assets together do you think this would take? Spoiler alert. I'm not going to keep you waiting. I open up this group, open up this effect. Now I have one text plus node. I'm going to talk about adding some of these custom controls like you saw and rigging them up with some basic expressions. Um, but I'm not going to talk a lot about the, the math or the work that went into this main sort of counter bar down here other than to say that that was built on this shading element tab. You can see I have this uh, background or outline bar and then this fill bar just as different shading elements. If you don't know anything about shading elements, my last video um, went into this at an introductory level. And all I'll say otherwise is that on this main sort of data line, the expressions and the math and the animation for sort of counting up to this number is all happening on the X size transform for this one transform element. Element three, the background goes to a value of one as at default. So if I animate this up with an anim curves or another modifier up to 0.45, that will be 45% of that whole value. And if you have that anim curves or something else running that number generator, then you can then plug that into text to have this text update as that counts up. That's cool. But what I want to talk about has to do with creating these custom controls and rigging up multiple uh, instances of text inputs on one text plus node for really powerful stuff like this. Now, this example does have a lot of extra animation and these shading elements, this graphics. We're going to build something out that is much more static, but focusing on the things we want to talk about. So I'm going to create a new 
text plus node. And I will just type in this hi to start us off. And what we are going to get introduced to uh, very quickly is if I right click either on or the main node itself here or on the title of the node in the inspector, I can come down to edit controls. And this, prepare yourself. I will click this and we get this wild little menu. If, if you've done any work like creating your own macros, you know that has an extra pop-up menu, that's intimidating. This is a whole lot too. By default, it adds you to the screen to add a control, but if you take this drop down, you can see all the different controls uh, that exist, all these different parameters that exist on this main text plus node. Things like the position, the individual controls for all the shading elements, your, your, your scales and your offsets and your font choice, it all lives here. And you could go into any of those controls and modify some things about how they work. But for this, we just want to add a new control. You can name this something. I'm gonna name this, uh, just to keep things simple, text one. And in this type, I'm gonna select to make this a text. The other important thing is to change this input control to text edit control. And this lines is how many lines you want it to take up. Uh, like this default window over here, I believe is eight lines, but we can just type in one line. And if I click okay, then it will add a user tab over here. And if I click that, hey, we have a new text field here that I can type in something like yo. And uh, I'm previewing the node, I typed in yo. Of course you can't see that yo because over here on a text, I just have uh, the high I typed in here. But if I get rid of that, I can right click in here and add an expression. Expressions inside this text window can get super cool. For instance, if I just type in text one and click away, hey, now we see that yo. So let's keep going. If I right click, go back to that edit controls. If I call this something like label now, it's a text, text control, one line, I click okay. I can type in a percent. If I go back to text, uh, we can start to put some different things together. A really important tool here is this, if you have space, period, period, space, that sort of combines different elements. So if I just type in label here, uh, it doesn't work anymore. Um, especially when you add this uh, period, period, I don't know if I said period or if I said text or space or something, period, period to combine two different elements. On here, you're kind of getting into the numerical value and the language of expressions. So instead of just uh, the name of this control, we actually have to go back to text one dot value, label dot value. And hey, now we have yo percent. So in this example, we're just combining two text fields that we have separate control over. That's pretty neat. Um, but let's do something where I add an edit control and I just call this something like uh, number. And instead of text, I'm gonna keep this type as a number and I'm gonna make this a slider control. I'm even gonna add in here, I want this from a range of zero to 100, uh, center of 50. I don't know if you need to technically add that. But if I click okay now, hey, now we have a slider that's connected to nothing. Ooh, ooh, real quick. And to show and to demonstrate this, if I right click, go back into edit controls, uh, I'm gonna scroll all the way down on this list. If you create a new value, it's automatically added at the bottom. If I go back to number, I am gonna click this button to keep it as an integer, to keep it as a whole number. And if I click okay, that will update. So now this is only whole numbers. Now, if I go back and replace this text one dot value, with number, oh, it's not working for me. Maybe it doesn't like being called number. So you can sometimes work yourself up into uh, uh, like contradictions, especially with expression. But if I type in, if I try to point to it specifically, text one dot number dot value, no. So let's just create a new one called like number Control, also capitalization is important, but that wasn't quite what was getting me in trouble there. 100, number control, let's see here. If I just type in number control, yes. <laughs> um, Don't call your custom control just number. It doesn't like that. But hey, now we have this slider. If I pull this up, uh, it is taking the value from this slider and just turning it into visible text. So if I did like number control, uh, you could also see, I don't need to put in that uh, dot value, even if I type in that 
label dot value. Even though I'm combining these two things, I don't need to add value after a number control because uh, that is a, it is generating a number which expressions know how to handle. But now we have this percentage slider that goes back and forth. Okay, almost there. Let's add that extra drop down controls that lets us choose between this number with our custom label and this custom text. We're building on these custom controls. We're going to build on expressions. I'm going to go to edit control and I will just call this value control. We do want this to be a number, but in this input control, like you have so many different options here. It's super cool, but we are coming down to combo control. And here you can add multiple different things to your drop down menu. I am just going to write in a text and then number add. If I click OK, you can see, hey, we have this value control drop down text or number. So if I go back to this main text field here, we already have this one uh, sort of uh, solved value. I'm going to put that in parentheses even just for my own benefit. And you know what? I'll only grab a notepad and let's start building this out just in notepad so we can all see it because this window can be pretty small. OK, this is the thing we created, right? So we are going to use an expression, a really powerful expression. Let's get space. We're going to type if with two eyes, which I believe is some sort of like if and only if statement, but we'll figure it out. So if parentheses, we are looking at, uh, we want the name of this drop down control, value control. If value control equals zero, then we want to bring in text one dot value. We'll build this out and then we'll see if it works or if I need to troubleshoot more. A comma, meaning if not, so if this is value, if this value control is set to text, put this you know text one field there. And if not, after that parentheses, put in this guy there. Close that parentheses on this main if statement as well. And let's see if I broke something. We have a yo. I changed that from text to number. We have that number you can control with this slider and this label. You can control uh, uh, customly whether you want this as a percentage or as a uh, tacos, tacos, whatever you want. 67 tacos or hello or subscribe. One. Neat, right? Super cool. Again, this expression we did to walk through, we have this if statement. So we do if we link to a specific control we created and this drop down control, I should have said um, visually, like it's just a drop down option one or two, but this is actually generating a number behind the scenes, which is why we needed to set this to zero for our first option. This uh, will generate as many numbers as options we have, but it starts at a value of zero, not one. So we can't say, hey, option one, do this, option two, do that. We have to do like option zero, this option, as many other as that. So we did, hey, if this is the first option, which returns a value of zero, then look at this other control here. If not, look at this number control plus this label control. And you can even stack these if statements. So I could have as many different text fields and as many different options under this drop down, and I could manage that all with one expression. That could get pretty wild and pretty heavy on your computer, but you can do it. If you've never messed with expressions, I think we covered some entry level stuff in that world. There's always more you can talk about with expressions, always uh, like specific expressions that are super valuable. If you want more info on that, you gotta let me know. If you want more general info uh, on uh, titles, you gotta let me know. And I didn't go into the math of this little animation here, but in my next video, I do want to show off one specific modifier. Um, we probably won't use it in this specific example, but it is uh, the driving factor in some really powerful infographics like the one I did right here. So if you want more expression and modifier goodness, uh, stick around uh, that specific little tidbit should come in the next video. But if you are following along, you made a cool little rig. You kind of modded resolve yourself by adding these controls and expressions. It's pretty neat. Uh, I hope you think so too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.